Hello everyone and welcome to a slightly different video. Welcome to this lovely background that I've got going on. So as you guys know, I actually do play Warhammer and paint the real life miniatures and I, I really do love painting. I've been doing it for a couple of years. Um, actually, probably a lot longer than that now. And I thought I'd uh, record myself painting as a kind of tutorial, kind of get into this side of YouTube. I know there's plenty of others, but I thought I'd throw my hat into the ring. It can't hurt. Um, with the help of my amazing girlfriend, she bought a tripod that's currently hanging off of my mic stand, um, holding my phone whilst recording the video. So as you guys know in my Let's Plays, whenever I see a squig, I tend to mention how much I love them. So what better thing to start off this series than painting a little bit of a squig. So as I go through all these videos, I'm going to tell you the techniques I use. Um, I'm going to show you what I use to help. Obviously, this painting stand is one of them. You, obviously, this isn't needed, but it, it kind of helps. It's more comfortable. Um, so we're going to start on the squig. I've got my fresh water ready. Remember, you need some fresh water. I, if I can lift it off. I've got a kitchen towel. I tend to use kitchen towel or um, whatever these things are called. The wiping things? I don't know what. I use them to dab the water off when I clean my paints from my water pot. You can see it's a bit, ugh, look at that. It's well loved, is how I would describe it. So we're just going to go through this, it's kind of like a hangout. Um, and we're going to paint this single squig together, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So, first off, obviously you have to build it. And I've base coated it as well as I could as you can see I'm going to point it out with the brush um, there are some slight gray bits like this which is understandable you're not going to cover everything because you don't when you spray models you don't want to over spray because then it gunks up all the details so like all these lines like in the muscles and the muscle definition and the teeth especially Ooh, is it blurred that you don't want to clog up loads of paint there because it loses the detail and it's a it's a tragedy for the sculptors who made these models so we're going to start off with the skin now i'm a fan of the classic red squig so in order to get this i spray painted with mephiston red spray paint um but we're also going to use a base coat of mephiston red and then we're going to layer on where actually? Where's my other red? Hang on. Oh. Well, that's right. Yeah. Evil Scuns. Evil Scuns. Evil Sun Scarlet. That's going to be the layer after the Mephiston. Then we're going to do a highlight of Wild Rider Red. And then we're going to do a tiny edge, edge, tiny, tiny highlight of Troll Slayer Orange to just make the muscles pop out a bit more. So. First off, we're going to recover this model with Mephiston Red, even though we had sprayed it Mephiston Red. Base coats are primarily to hold the later layers of paint onto the model. If you just try and paint a Warhammer model straight off of the grey, um, because when they come in a sprue, um, they'll be like this so there'll be like this gray if you paint straight onto this it doesn't actually God, focus it doesn't actually hold on it will slip off so it needs this base coat to hold the paint on so we're going to do that now so give it a good shake i'm not going to shake it on camera right now you can um, water it down a little bit if you want. Just be very gentle with it. And we're just gonna get painting. Apologies if it goes a bit blurry every now and then. I'm trying to look through the viewfinder and also look through the um, camera to make sure it's not blurry. Which it is. Let me move this out of the way, there you go. So as you can already see, 
as we paint this. Obviously, it's not going to be shiny when it dries. But a thing to bear in mind is paint always dries lighter than what appears on a on the model. So we're just going to do this and just hang out. So when I paint, I tend to watch something and it may sound a bit weird, but whenever I watch something when I paint, I remember what I watched. So when I painted my last set of squigs, which I'll show you in a second, I remember exactly what TV show I was painting. Painting? Exactly what TV show I was watching when I was uh, painting it. And the last set of squigs that I did, I was watching The Last Kingdom on Netflix. Now after the disappointment of Game of Thrones, it's really helped. If you're a fan of medieval, feudal, or pre-feudal really, England, so like Vikings, Pagans, early Christianity, the time of like Charlemagne, um, give it a watch. It's very good. It's not... It's a bit of a breath of fresh air, really, because obviously Game of Thrones started off as a very medieval, feudal, lords, ladies kind of show. But as it got on, it kind of lost something as it got more and more fantasy. Because the more and more fantasy it got, the less grounded in reality it was. And that was something that the show really did well. Because obviously, deaths of main characters and one simple mistake can get you killed. I think that was kind of like the mantra of the whole show. Um, once, obviously, all the White Walkers and the dragons and people getting resurrected and magic started popping in, it started getting a bit too out of this world. And I think people could kind of like tell. Um, so this Last Kingdom show. It's all grounded in reality. It's obviously based off historical events. And real history. Um, but it doesn't embellish on facts. So you won't see a dragon flying around or people getting resurrected from the dead. And it's kind of nice to see a show like that again. Right. So now we've nearly done the base of the base coat. I just need to finish this leg off. Right. Don't miss out on the underbelly. Never, uh, never assume, because obviously if you're painting this for your own army, you know exactly where it's painted it and what's not. If, uh, if you're out at your local hobby place playing a game, um, and someone picks it up, and then they look at the bottom and it's all grey. It's going to be slightly embarrassing. But again, it depends how much time you want to spend on it. Because I'm going, this isn't going for um, tabletop standard, I'm going for slightly above. 
Now, if you don't know, tabletop standard means when you paint, you paint it just to like a tabletop standard so you're not going to see all the detail from afar so it doesn't need to be too detailed. So now we've got the base coat. What we need to do is a shade. So a lot of people use Reichland Flesh Shade on red. Um, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use Druichi Violet. It gives it a good dark tone all over and it makes the dark shade in the red stand out a bit more. So just going to get our shade brush. This is my trusty, well actually technically it's a wash brush from Citadel. It's, it's old. It's been through a lot. So we're going to move the pot out of the way because that's for some reason focusing on it. So we're just going to literally treat it mean. Just wash all over. Now, one thing that you have to be careful with washes, and I have personal experience with this, is they can be glossy for no reason. Now, when I bought some new big tubs of washes, you have to shake them. And I didn't shake them that much. And I, I washed over a whole regiment. I think it was Skaven. It was a Doom Wheel. It was a Doom Wheel. And I washed over it with Agrax Earthshade and it made the whole model shiny and it was awful and I had to start all over again. So when you get these pots make sure you shake them. Um, also when you do these shades try and avoid build up. So if you've got a massive blob of shade it's going to dry as a massive blob and you don't want that because it doesn't look very nice. So that's the shade done. We're just going to let that dry. So while we're letting that dry, I'm going to show you some of the other squigs I've done. Sorry, it's going to wobble because I just pushed away. Let's have a look. So here's one I painted earlier. There you go. So as you can see, there's the skin. So what you kind of want to be and do when painting skin on models is you kind of want to be brave. Now, like I said, when when paint is applied to a model, it's a lot lighter. Um, but then once it dries, it gets darker. But when you're painting it, when I painted this line here, it looked incredibly bright and if it if it's too many shades higher than the color underneath it that you're highlighting on uh, it can look a bit silly but you just kind of have to be brave with it sometimes but here's a squig as you can see we've got a purple gums on the mouth we've got some teeth going we've got some tiny 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 little yellow dots as you can see here's my finger and that's the dot we've got some spines going down and we've got some uh, spots and the base, if you're wondering, I tend to go for more like a, of a cave look. So I just put some normal sand on the base. Black. I water down black a bit. And, and then just layer some shades of grey on top. And it's just like a, a dark cavey look. So this is what we're eventually going to aim for. You can tell the difference. A lot of love goes into painting. So here's another one. I quite like this guy. He's got a goblin in his mouth. Again, from very far away. It's like any painting in real life, really. It's um, the detail stands out from far away. But the more you look in, obviously, you can tell all the different brush strokes and stuff. So it, every, the closer you get, the more critical of your own work you're going to be. So some of these lines obviously aren't the cleanest, um, but from display distance and 
from obviously tabletop distance, it looks great. Yeah, there's that one. This one looks like a bulldog. I like this guy. I've given him some little pink lips. I'm going to, for the one that we're painting at the moment, I'm going to give him more of a defined pink lip look. There's some little mushrooms there. You can be creative with obviously squid colours. You can be very, very colourful. Along with the uh, the mushrooms themselves, you can be very colourful. But like I said, I'm just going for the classic red squig look at the moment. Here's one. It's a bit different. So he's got a tongue sticking out with some saliva. Now getting the right colour for saliva is quite an interesting task. Um, luckily we don't have to do it for this one. But for this, if you want to get a good looking saliva colour, go with the same colour that is for mushroom stems. And it's a base coat of Rakarth Flesh, which is like a real real pale white. Kind of greyish white. And then just uh, layer it up with Iron Rack Skin and then a bit of Pallid Witch Flesh. And that will sort it out. And it looks really good. It works very well. There's a little hair on there. Look at that. And obviously a little some mod modelling tufts of grass. So the horns are something, and the teeth obviously, is something we're going to go through in this video. But to get a horn like this, it's just multiple layers of um, bone colour, but progressively getting further into the model um, as you go for with each layer. So the bottom layer is obviously the darkest, and then a little bit across you just do some like straight lines of a higher, lighter colour. And then you do even more lines of a more light colour, and then you do a final highlight of like a white fur. This guy's pretty crazy. He's got a little yellow mushroom on his head. And they do all look really great when they're all together. This guy's kind of like an angler fish, so I wanted to give him a bit more of an impact. So I made it look like his face is being lit up a little bit. Last two. This guy, Mr. Smiley. It's the same guy. Is it the same guy? No, it isn't. Slightly different. This one's based off the classic model, actually, if I remember correctly. And then this guy. So, actually, the guy that we're doing is this one. So, as you can see, the faces are on different bodies, but the face is the same. So, it's getting there. It's nearly dry. So, while it's drying, what we could do is we could do the base coat of the teeth. So... I'm going to actually take this off of the stand. Uh, no, I'm not. It'd be easier if I do it this way. So the base coat for the teeth, I'm just shaking it at the moment. Now, despite what people believe and what many uh, dentists would want you to believe when they ask you to spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds on their teeth whitening kits, teeth aren't white. They're bone colour. There are they are bones and they should be the colour of bones. So if you see a skeleton, it's not bright white, it's creamy bonish colour. So we're gonna do a base coat of Zandri Dust. Obviously this isn't quite white yet, but this is a good base colour to use for teeth. I'll get back my brush. Now I need to get some more Zandri dust, I'm running out. You can be messy. Don't be scared of being messy with your painting, especially for this stage. So I'm just gonna literally coat it all over. because we're going to tidy it up later. So don't be worried. 
don't be worried about being precise. Because if you worry about being precise early on, it's going to take you a lot longer to finish the model than needs be. Now, come on, focus. There you go. Look at that smile. It's hard painting through a camera, I tell you. Unfortunately, my natural light is progressively going away because there's a massive black cloud blocking it so I might have to resort to my trusty plug-in light now don't neglect their feet and their nails because detail really makes everything in a model let's um just get my light set up so i bought this light on amazon and when i went to buy another it had gone so now this is literally the only light I can ever get which is like this and it is perfect for Warhammer because it's got like this bendy um, thing going on right it's a bit better so again don't worry about it it's gonna look a bit rubbish right at the beginning but uh layers and layers is what you want So now, do these. We're going to do the, as you can see on the model, see these little spikes, oops. See these little spikes, like here and on the back. Um, we're gonna do them separately because we don't want to spend all the time uh, we don't want to spend all the time painting this and then having to go over it again when we do the, the flesh tone because if we paint this now we can't be messy when we come to apply our skin so the teeth are slightly dry, so we're going to do another layer. Of Xandri dust, just to cover it up. Because with darker base coats, it's harder to cover lighter areas of the model. So if you've got a lighter color that you want to apply, you need to do it a couple of times if you've done it over a dark base coat. And of course, red is quite dark. There you go. Right done so now what we need to do we need to wash this so we're gonna do a shade of agrax earth shade now i've got three of these up there two of them no matter what come out as glossy i've shaken it for about 10 minutes um but there must have just been a bad batch or they just labeled because you can get gloss versions of these shades 
So make sure you're not buying a gloss one unless you want a glossy finish. Um, but very, be very careful. It, it, it seemed like the newer versions of these tend to be glossier. So I've got a very old one. Um, I found this on my local Toy Master and it was right at the back. So this has been around there for a while. So let's shake it up. You have to shake it for a little bit because again, you don't want it being glossy. And if it is glossy, you'll just have to paint that layer that you just glossed over again. So you would, in this instance, if it came out glossy, you would just have to paint over a Zandri dust again. Right. There it is in all its glory. Look at that. So what this is basically doing, this is imitating shade. And it's also giving it a bit of color. So I'm using my shade brush. It's got a bit of a different tip. See, again, slightly battered, but it's a bit. I've got a bit more control. Just checking by dabbing it. It's definitely right. Swish straight over like that. Just clean sweeps. There you go. As easy as that. Just do some clean strokes. I need to go over it once because you don't want to over apply. So there you go. You can already tell the difference between the two stages and the definition in between the teeth and it really makes the model pop more. So now that's drying pop your lid back on let's uh zoop zoom in a bit so as you can see like i said it's drying in the crevices of the teeth we've got a bit of a build up here now if you have a build up just grab it with a brush and wipe it off on your cloth because that build up will dry and it will come out come out as that solid color Right, let's zoom out again. Now that we've got our base coat of Mephiston and we've done our Jerucci over it, you can go straight to Evil Suns if you want, but I'm going to play it safe like I always do. And I'm gonna do another layer of Mephiston just to bring that red, because what that wash did, it lowered the color of the red down by a couple of grades. So, if I show you this way, it'll be easy to recognize. So look at the tail. Now, can you see the color difference between, obviously ignore the shine, but the, if it stops shaking, whoop, come on. Can you tell the difference between that red and that red? Now, it's up to you. It's not that much of a difference, but if you're going for gold, you may as well run the extra mile. So that's what we're going to do. We want to make it as covered as possible. Because also, because this is now a darker shade, if we pop straight up to Evil Sun Scarlet, it's going to stand out more. And like I said earlier, if you do a highlight or a layer that's too many shades higher than its original color, then it's not going to look as good as it could. Let's just get in. So what you want to avoid though, because obviously we use the shade for a reason. And that is to bring definition in the darker areas of the model. What I mean by that is the little folds in the muscle and the skin. So you don't want to cover everything again. You want to kind of help the shade bring out those little areas in the 
the scout to help define more of the details. So for example, I'm going to paint here on the tail and down like this in one stroke. And I'm going to paint here. I'm distinctly missing this section here. See that? And that's because I want there to be a bit of a shade and a bit of tone in the colour between the two. Because it's a bit like real life. So now we're going to paint the cheek. Again. Don't cover all of the work that you've just done. Leave some of the shade. Because you want your model to have layers on it. Now obviously the handle helps steady your hand while you paint these. And don't be worried to move the model around to whatever helps you paint. So we're going to we go for a bit of an above view here. But I'm going to show you again what I mean about avoiding covering everything that you just did. So there's these little lines here. So if you can, I'm going to zoom in for you. Whoa. So as you can see here, there's this bulge in the skin of the squig. And there's a bit of a kind of like a crevice. Kind of like a flap, like a skin flap. Now you don't want to cover the shade of that that you just worked so hard to get. So we're going to paint on top. And then straight across there. Leaving some of that alone. See? Slight difference in colour, but it does make a difference at a distance. Now we're just gonna carry on. There we go. Straight across like this. And then the top of the muscle on the leg. Top of the muscle on the other leg. And now we're going to do this part here. All the way down. One nice stroke. Now as you get more experience with painting, you want to try and do as many, or actually, as little strokes as possible. And you'll eventually get very clean on your lines. So you want to make sure to do that, that the tip of your brush is always pointed. So now I'm just going to blast through. And obviously once you get confidence in what you're doing, See, I left that gap there. Can you tell the difference between the two? Once you build confidence in it, you'll be able to do this pretty quick. I can probably do a set of 10 squigs in a day to the standard that of, of the ones I showed you. And they look great as a huge bulk on the battlefield, let me tell you. Because what I think, because obviously Warhammer is quite an expensive hobby, 
I think ooh, there's a hair there. Look at that. It's the wonders of having cats. Uh, I think if you're going to spend so much money on these figures, then you might, you might as well give some love to them. Now, I know everyone's different, and not everyone enjoys the painting aspect, which is probably why people commission people like me. But give them some love. Because obviously, you can give them little histories, little backstories. I remember when I was a kid and I was first starting getting into Warhammer. I got into it through this Lord of the Rings magazine. And my dad, as lovely as he is, he subscribed me to it. And every couple of weeks, I would get some more Lord of the Rings Warhammer. And it would be characters, and it would be like... Just normal soldiers. But what I would do is I would convert the soldiers or make them stand out through paint. So I would give them like a little banner or a sigil and I'd come up with a little backstory about how their house got the banner or the sigil or why the guy's shield is broken or why he's a different colour than others. And it just brought them to life more. So obviously when you're playing with them on the battlefield, when he dies, you feel worse. Because <laughs> you feel like you know him. It sounds silly, but it, it really brings the hobby to life. But if it makes you happy, it's not silly. Just like if it works, then it's not stupid. So we've nearly finished doing the Mephiston coat on all this again. I think I'm just going to stay zoomed in for this. Just making sure that we don't lose our our shading. That was sorry about that squeak. That was actually my uh, my light bulb. And there's this little bit in the body here. I can't quite get the camera angle to go there. There we go. Again, how much detail and effort you want to put in is up to you. So there he is. Again, don't worry about this. These blotch blotches. We'll tidy that up later. So he's looking pretty good. You can leave it here if you wanted to, obviously. I mean, this is probably tabletop standard. Let's zoom out a little bit. But it's not bad, is it? Not bad at all. So now what we're going to do, we're going to do exactly what we just did on the skin now that the wash have dried on the teeth. So we're going to grab our Zandri dust again. And we're going to go over the teeth very finely. So now we actually do want to be careful with what we're doing. So let's pop the zoom back on. And be very careful. Now, what I tend to find is if you're trying to do a clean stroke, don't brush inward towards a big clump of the model. Brush away. So what I find with teeth and horns especially is brush away from the base of the horn or the tooth that you're doing. And if that means holding the, up, the miniature upside down, then so be it. But for example, what I mean is we'll do a tooth that's heading this way so I can show you a bit better. So see this tooth here? Instead of painting up, we're going to go whoop, paint down. Obviously you can see a lot better than I can. We're just going to keep going. Now again, you don't want to cover all of the shade. Because you took a long time to do that. Let's do all the teeth. Is that gum? Here. 
So if you follow what I'm doing here, it gives a really good little effect to the teeth and the horns. So what I'm doing is I'm getting a little, I'm not making the edge even. I'm doing like strip, 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 like little lines. And what that does, it kind of gives this like jagged effect like I showed on the model earlier. I'm going to hold this upside down for this dude. See? Can you see the difference between the two? So can you see like... It's a bit of a clump there, I'll just get rid of that. So I'm not going all the way to the bottom, but I'm doing little jagged lines and that's to build up the layers so let's keep going one stroke on that one See? How easy is that? Obviously you want to be careful. And you want to make it smooth. You don't want to glob your paint. Now, there's a little bit of red on this tooth. Can you see it at the top there? Layers and layers and layers. It's the key. Now I find painting quite relaxing. After a very busy day, long week, painting is a good way to wind down. And it's also nice because you don't have to stare at a screen unless you're watching this video. Now let's not neglect the toes. So again, let's pick out the edges. And then grab these ones over here. Right, there you go. So the base coats are done. Come on, focus. There you go. Let's whap it down a bit. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go back to our skin. And as you can see, as it's dried, you can tell the different shades. And that, that really makes the molding pop and it gives the muscle definition and it just brings out the detail a lot more. So what we're going to do to bring that out even more is our next layer of Evil Sun Scarlet. Now this is a layer paint. The last two that we've been using is a base paint. As you can see. Now what that means is they're slightly thicker and they're made to be the base. These layer paints are slightly thinner, so they're made for more layers. That sounds really stupid, but it's the clues in the name. Base paint, you kind of really only need one co uh, coat because it's thicker, and it's obviously to hold the rest of the layers on tighter to the model. Layer paints, you will find that one 
layer might not do you. So don't be worried about doing multiple layers, which we might do today. So let's pop the zoom back on. And I'm going to show you the difference. So we don't want to do a crazy amount, but what we're going to do is go over the more raised areas of the skin. Now this is what I meant about being brave is when you first paint this on it's going to look very striking but just keep going with it let's do chin next so we don't want to go over all of the things Let's just bring it out like this and go along. So one of the key things that you want to do is you want to use the sculptor's expertise to help you in your painting. And what I mean by that is if there's a raised area of the skin, make that lighter. If there's a recess, make that darker and the model will come out looking great. So let's do the face. So like I said, raised models, well, raised areas of the model, you wanna paint bright. So let's start painting them bright. And the gums, we're gonna do later. So like I said, use the sculptor to help you. And obviously a steady hand is helpful in this. But if you ever think that something's not working, I would suggest keep going with it. Because like many things, you can't really judge until it's finished. Now I paint actual canvases in real life sometimes, and the amount of times that I've nearly given up and started again when doing a canvas is probably every single time I've done one. But you just kind of have to persevere with it. And then you will really know if something didn't work but you might come to the end of the project and realize that, wow, that did actually really work. Now, obviously as this dries, the gloss goes away. So we'll be able to tell better how the model's doing. Again, raised muscle like this. Help give it some definition. Don't go over everything that you've done. Point here. There you go. Kneecap. And now this big meaty thigh. So we're gonna stroke around and you just kind of wanna imagine where the skin would be lighter because of the way the sun hits it. So again, use the sculptor to help you with this. Now this tail here, there's a bit of a, a raised bit here tail so as you do layers obviously the base cover is quite thick you want to have your lines thinner and thinner so 
so your layer won't cover the entirety of what you just did in the previous step. So for example here, this is quite a thick bit there, isn't it? So if we just do this, we get a better understanding of what I mean. Hold it in a better position. So we're not going over in everything that we've just done. That's not what we want to do, but we're going over parts of it. Like so. side raised bit like that raised bit like that tiny little bit there and we're going to do the legs this bit of muscle here there's like a bit of sinew or something Now, obviously, the skin takes the longest part on the model because it's what covers the majority of it. Now, if you're painting like a soldier or a space marine or something like that, obviously the armor is going to be the thing that takes the longest. Um, but with the squig, obviously it's the skin. Now we're going to do the meaty thigh. Down like that, across, there's a bit of an indent here, so we're not going to hit that. Get some more paint on the brush and go down. At the top, there's a bit of light here in the corner of this knee, well actually what is this thigh? And then a little bit in the middle. Now. We need to do the back parts of these spikes, like so, and we need to finish doing the top. So you'll probably be able to tell more of what I'm doing from the top view. So here's this big bit of meat that we did earlier. There's the shade. I'm going to go like that. Like that. And then fill the middle there and then we're going to bring it down on the sides and fill it in a little bit because obviously the more light is hitting the top of his head than it is the sides so you want the model to reflect that so think of it kind of like in a realistic way Think where the light would be hitting the model almost. And like I said earlier, crevasses or folds in skin is going to be where you can't even see it. It's going to be where um, the darker tones are. But if it's directly on top, then it's going to be a lot brighter. Alright, is that everywhere? If I have skipped, I've skipped, skipped his shin. See? Can you tell the difference between the colours? That really stands out to the naked eye. I'm just doing a quick glance over it. There's a bit here on the top of his head. Darker where it shouldn't be. So it's going to join there, isn't it? And there. Like 
I said. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be the mantra that I stick to. Use their sculpting to help you in your painting. That's what it's there for. And then there's this little bit of side that will probably go down there. Right. And the last but not least is the under part of his tail. Oop, there we go. raise here so we're going to paint this too like that and I'm just going to paint in this quick I know you can't see but there you go we're going to zoom out whoops that's what we went out I'm going to wash your brush Have a look. So as you can see, another layer of red has really made it stand out a bit more. So the more layers you do, obviously the better shaded it's going to be and the more realistic it's going to get. We could do another layer, um, but that's up to you. I think this is fine for now. There's no like darker parts where I want there to be lighter. Actually, there is one on the back of the shin there. So let's, uh, yeah, let's do that real quick. So assess your model after every step. And we can just have a look at this. I'm gonna do this real quick. On the back of the shin. Sorry if it's blurry. So this is the first time I'm doing it. So I'm just getting used to the setup myself. I don't believe how many wires are covering me right now. <laughs> cool. I think that's better. I want to make sure it's applied smoothly. Now, we're going to carry on doing the skin. Next layer is one of our highlight layers and it's Wild Rider Red. Now, a lot of people use Squig Orange, which is actually, I guess, what you're meant to use for this. But I find it's a bit too bland and a bit duller. I'll show you. So here's Squig Orange. A good indication is the base. Now, if we have a look at the Evil Suns, I feel like this is more fleshy paler so if we if we went up this step i don't think this would quite look quite right and it doesn't but if we go up to orange then it's more of a natural upgrade well look at that this is from 2011 and this is from 2013 when's this from when is that from 2013 i wonder what my oldest pot of paint is so yeah highlight wild rider red now what a highlight means is I guess you can kind of use the same kind of thing as makeup, but shake it again. Uh, shake it a bit more. Um, you're highlighting the edges to make it pop, make it stand out. So most of the highlights are going to be done on the raised parts of the skin again. Now, what I'd recommend doing with these paints is because if the way they're designed, if we open it up, it's got this lip, but the problem is it's got this habit of doing that with the paint. Now, there's that big glob on the back. Can you see it there from this lip here? That will get behind here, clog it up here and dry, and then it will mean that like it is doing there. It will clog it up and then it won't 
close properly, which means your paints will dry out. So I'm going to grab that paint and get rid of it. So what you want to do, and what I was getting at, is tapping it on the lid. Now this seems silly, but it works. Just give it a couple of taps or a couple of flicks. Get your frustrations out on a paint pot. And that will mean more of this paint trickles back down into the pot itself. And doesn't flow into the back of the pot and clog up and make you dry your paints out. So we're going to zoom in on this one. There we go. So now what we're going to do is going to highlight and what a highlight does it is what you would imagine it really brings out parts of the model now you can't really see it yet because it's wet trust me we'll do it now we're going to highlight these horns. Now you want to be more liberal with this. You don't want to highlight too much. Just highlight the very raised parts of the model. I got a rogue hair on my brush. Look at that. Don't you hate it when that happens? Come on, focus. There you go. Just highlight as much as you want. You have to be very careful with these parts. where the, the handle comes in handy. Come on, there we go. Now when it comes to bigger parts of skin, you'll want to highlight and be very smooth with your actions. So this cheek connection you want to call it like that I need to highlight so I'm going to put a focus there you go like that now that doesn't seem like a lot but it will do a lot For the rest of the body, you kind of just want to do the edges. Like so. You can be quite quick with this if you really want. Like that. This little bit in the foot, top of the foot, top of the foot, side of the foot, more top. Where else in the leg do I want to do? If it would focus, come on. There you go. Highlight that chin a little bit so you make it a bit weird. It's not connecting to anything. Get on like that. 
Now we want to highlight this, that, and this, and do a long line. Now that wasn't the smoothest, but hard angle to get. And again on the other side. better you want to be continuous with your line like that and do the same for the other side that try and make that highlight Now the top again, let's have a look at the top. So again, the raised parts of the flesh. Oh. Right there, right there. And let's bring the edges out a bit. So, now we're on the other side of the face. Quick line. Cap. Have a look at the ear. A bit like that. Just use the sculpt to help you. Top of the toes. Do a little bit on the cheek there. I'm getting my light back, so I don't need that anymore. Where else? Again, assess your model. There's a bit here that I think I can do. So I'm going to do the line there. God, this is really an awkward angle. <laughs> there you go. And the last thing that I want to do is this bottom part of the cheek. And then the chin. We're going to zoom out, wash the brush, close the pot, and there it is. You can stop here again, but the highlight's done, and it's getting closer and closer to what we want. So now the last thing we're going to do is a final edge highlight of Troll Slayer Orange. Now you can tell the difference between these two colors is quite bold. So you want to be very, very minuscule with this amount. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change my brush to this one. Now I would recommend Games Workshop brushes are fine. Medium layer brush is what I've been using throughout the whole thing. I've literally done this whole model with just this one brush, but for smaller, tinier details is you're going to need something a bit thinner. So what I use is this. I would recommend everyone get one of these. It's an insane detail brush. 
from Army Painter. Now, I don't think you need a massive collection of brushes, but obviously every single one has their use. But I tend to just use the same brush until it dies. Um, and then buy another of the same brush. But here's the how bright it is. So literally, all we're doing on this, I'm going to do it from afar first. Actually, no, I'll zoom in for you. Right. Stop shaking. Literally, literally like this. On the very corners of the model. So the very, 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 very tippiest, tippiest of tippiest edges you want to highlight. That was my cat. <laughs> Hello. What do you want? You're in my video. I know what, exactly what he wants. He wants food. Just woken up grumpy. Now he wants his food. So what this is going to do is, again, it's going to really bring out the most detailed parts. Pop it in the chin. So you don't want to overdo it. So for areas like this, again, just the most raised part. Tend to stick to parts that are the pointiest. So a little bit on the end of the tail. And then just bring it out to blend it with the rest. Tiny dot, tiny dot, literally the smallest application of this is all that's needed, but it will make a difference. Now the most raised part of the cheek. that down here right on the edge of the sh <laughs> nearly said shoe right on the edge of the uh, toe and then just a little bit more on this little horn here Can I see if we missed anywhere oh the top let's do the top I've done this leg. Let's see this leg. And this little leg joint, whatever the hell you can call that. Right. That's the edge highlighting done. What's the brush? Let's step back and look. 
See? Now, it may not seem like a lot, but that really makes it pop out more, especially the face. Let's have a look. So as you can see, not that bad. So now, the majority of the model's done. So we're just gonna do the teeth. I'm gonna base color the spines now that we finished the skin. So I'm using my extreme detail brush and Zandri dust. And we're gonna do exactly what we did with the bones on these. bit more paint and this leg only has two now what you want to kind of do is you don't want to go all the way to the bottom of the spike if you do you're gonna lose that dark color which helps define it against the rest of the model if you went all the way down to the bottom with this bone color to the bottom of the spike you're going to paint over the dark shade that distinguishes that kind of circle can you see it's like a circle around it if i paint it all the way down to the bottom of the spike then that circle is going to disappear and it's not going to look as good as it could so when it comes to stuff like this try to leave a bit on the bottom so it makes it stand out a bit more little spike there there we go that's pretty much that just check in all over check from all angles that you haven't missed a significant amount a little bit on that spike there if you can see so I missed a toe would you believe that there's a toe right there that I did not paint there you go now no one in in the world will ever notice that other than me and that'll probably be the case with some of the minis that you do but You'll know it's there, and that's all that matters. So, while we wait for that to dry, we're going to do the next layer on the teeth. Now, the next layer is... Where is it? I'm going to have to find mine. Your shabti bone. Now, remember what I said about the teeth? and any horns and stuff that you do in future as well you want to there's the color there's the cat again what do you want no not for me you want to do the lines you don't want to cover the entire tooth again and what i mean by that i'll demonstrate it on this tooth right here straight line but leaving the base okay so there's a gap here where I didn't cover the old color we're gonna do that on every single tooth to give the tooth layers Paint's a bit thick. I'm going to water it down a little bit. You don't 
don't want your paint being globby. See, it looks a bit globby there. If that happens, just get a bit of water. This too. That is a tiny, tiny tooth up there. Now remember that you're very up close in this video. You'll never look at a model this up close again. So if it looks good at this distance, then you know it's going to look great at normal distance. Teeth done. Now every model I find has one distinguishing feature that kind of gives it the centerpiece of the entire sculpt and for this one it is definitely the teeth. Now what works really well with this color scheme that we're doing is with a lighter color like a yellow or a really bright blue. The teeth will get a bit lost, but because we're going for a red, it, um, it really makes the teeth pop out more. And it really helps because the teeth are definitely part of the centerpiece of this model. So we want to make sure they look good. Because that is the first thing you're going to notice when you see it. Alright, so now we just need to do toe beans. hope you guys are still here <laughs> if you've made it this far into the video I'd be very impressed maybe I'll do like a little chapter of or timestamps of when what part is etc so I'm not going to do washes on these bone bits. I'm just going to go straight for the Ashabti. Sorry, you can't see that. And that's because they're a bit too small to warrant a wash. And because we already did a wash on the model earlier, the only thing that would benefit from a wash on this is that circle that I was talking about. So. If you do accidentally paint all the way down to the bottom of one of the spines, just do a wash and leave it in the back. That's all you need. Again, don't go all the way down to the bottom. Just enough to keep some of that shade. There you go. Let's put him down. Zoom out. Keep going with the teeth. Next layer 
You don't need as many layers. You can, again, you can stop here if you want. This looks pretty good. But our next layer is Screaming Skull. Now you can tell the difference between the two. Slightly brighter. Pop it open. That's what it looks like. Do exactly what we just did, but with this lighter one. And then after that, it's the final highlight. I don't really know why I love squigs so much, but I guess it's just such an interesting design. Because if you didn't know, squigs are essentially mushrooms. And why a mushroom is so angry enough to spawn or evolve teeth like this, who knows. But squigs are, well, a lot of the time, what orcs actually eat. Kind of like cannibalism, because orcs are also mushroom. In the Warhammer universe. In Lord of the Rings, there were elves once. I still don't quite fully understand how that works, but if someone in the comments could explain it to me. That would be excellent. And there. Now we need to do the toe beans. Like this. Just tiny little ledge highlights. We're essentially doing what we did with the uh, with the. Um, Wild Rider Red. We're doing for this. So literally just blob on the top. Blob on the top. And that's that done. Look at that grin. So now, wash the brush, wipe it down. The last, the last highlight is pure white but first let's look at it look at that doesn't that look good so what we want to do is we want to do the very very tips of the teeth in white and if you're painting horns paint the tip of the horn white as well oh god that's gobby a new one of those I'll add it to my list of paint that I need. So, water it down a little bit if you need it. Because you don't want it to be too thick. And you can use your fine detail brush for this. But what you want to do, literally just a very thin line of white in some of the teeth. Now you're not going to be able to see this exceptionally well because it is very bright. But trust me, just like the edge highlight that we did in the skin, it makes a lot of difference. And again, it's worth taking time with these models. Someone spent a lot of time sculpting them. You spent a lot of time building them. And probably spent a lot of time at work paying for them. So take your time. There's no rush. I'll um I'll do a quick video in future how to get them battle ready because obviously this is for more 
time consuming versions so these aren't tabletop standard they're just probably display standard and there you go very simple I'm just gonna do a tiny little blob here on the, one of the teeth tiny one here like that on the edge so let's wash our brush zoom out move this light out the way there you go as you can see makes it pop out a lot more now we're nearly there there's two things left to do we need to do the gums and we need to do the eyes now the eyes are going to be easy so all we need for the eyes is yellow and what I'm going to use flash gets yellow very bright. You can do whatever eye colour you want, but with red, yellow really stands out. So you're going to need, see, here it is, look how bright that is. You're going to need your insane detail brush, because where we're going, we're going to need it. There's that little eyeball there. And one there. So I'm going to do this bigger one first. Get a tiny little blob on the end of your brush. And very carefully. Now, I went over a bit there. If that happens, don't worry too much. We can redo it. All with a simple bit of red. I'm going to blame the camera lens. And you'll never know what happened. Now we've got to do the other one. Let's grab a tiny blob of yellow. And I'm just going to go straight in. Sorry if it's blurry. There you go. Look at that. So that makes it stand out a lot more. So if we zoom out. See? The clue is in the eyes. Really brings it to life. Now the last thing are the gums. So you'll notice on the model it has gums which we have neglected to paint so far. Now to do the gums we need a base coat of Screamer Pink and then we're going to go in with Wazdaka Red and then finally we're going to do a very tiny highlight of Emperor's Children. So, Scream of Pink is a base paint. So it's thicker. So we're just going to do this real quick. So, use your fine detail brush again. And here's some gum. Now you want to be careful, which is why I'm saying use the fine detail brush, because you don't want to have to redo all the hard work you just spent on the teeth. There. All the way around. Like 
like so and the inside of this lip this lip is kind of like modeled it's a bit of like an overlap so this part will be pinky too there you go and now just do the top bit here So, and there's a tiny line. Can you see it? Tiny line of gum. Like that. And there you go. Again, you can leave it there. You can also give it a wash if you want. If you wanted to give it a wash, I would recommend Dorichi Violet, but it's not entirely necessary because we're gonna use that base paint, Screamer Pink, as kind of like the shade color. Because the next color up, which is Wazdaka Red, is gonna be the main color of the gums. So now we're gonna go straight onto this with the Wazdaka. So, leaving some of that purple still in view. You don't want to go over everything. You just want to go over some of it. Like so. A little bit on top. There you go. Fun deal. Last but not least, Emperor's Children will really help make it pop. Shake it up. See how much brighter that is? So let's, come on, my lid closed. Sometimes it does this. Grab a tiny bit of on your brush. And like always, only do it on the most raised parts. So we're gonna zoom in on this one. So the very lippy lips of the gums cover in the bright pink. Like so. Now try and do what I'm doing there. Try and give a little gaps. My lid pop closed again. My lid pop, my pot lid closed again. Like so, just edges of the most important when doing this part very very edges of the gums like so and that's it Let's close the pot lid wash your paint brush not paint don't wash your paint and there you go There's your finished squig. That's pretty much it. There's no other little details on this squig that you need to concentrate on. 
Just kind of need to do the base after this. Yeah, there you go. In the time that we've done this, it's gotten dark. <laughs> so, that's from start to finish how to paint a squig. I'm pretty happy with it. Let's take it off the base. So, as you saw in the beginning of the video, he now matches his friends where they really didn't match earlier on. But now you've been through all the separate layers of the skin, how to do the teeth, the eyes really make it stand out more, and obviously the, the gums as well. Yeah. There's his doppelganger. That's that. So I hope you enjoyed. If you followed along with this, let me know. I'd be really interested to see if it actually helped you or not. Obviously, this is the first video of its kind, so be gentle with me. But yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.